Riot released a devs update on 2020 ranked and matchmaking. We kind of talked about this accidentally in the last video, but here's the official post for those that were kind of curious about it. They can check out the next update on ranked and matchmaking. We've got details on progress we've made, our next projects, and early preseason explorations. Welcome back again. I'm Cody, Riot Code Bear German or Germain, a product lead of competitive gameplay on League of Legends. In late February, we talked about our plans for ranked in 2020. Today, we'll revisit those goals, provide an update on what we've done so far, and reveal some big changes that are making their way to you soon. Buckle up. Goals. As a refresher, this year we want to solve problems that have been a thorn in everyone's side for years. This means picking apart our system and yanking out old plumbing to meet the following goals. Improve Q matchmaking quality without compromising Q times and availability. Improve transparency around ranked and matchmaking systems. Improve progression satisfaction and skill expression in our systems. Make rewards more recognizable and relevant for time spent in league. Players can play with and find others they want to play with. Last post, we briefly touched on game ruining behavior, but didn't explicitly include it in our goals. As such, we've added a new goal that explicitly covers the interactions you have with other players during your matches. So basically provide players who are subject to bad behaviors more visibility into actions taken. Initial results. We're about a third of the way through the year. Our focus so far has been on our first goal, improve Q matchmaking quality without compromising Q time and availability. Here's what we've shipped since February and how it's faring. Autofill, auto fill, sorry, priority. In 10.6, we shipped autofill auto priority. I'm saying priority because I keep getting my tongue twisted by autofill with the P right after, sorry. Which aims to equalize the number of autofills across teams. Since then, autofill imbalance has gone from 11.4% of all ranks, man, it was that high? Solo duo games to less than 5%. Okay, that's some progress with almost no impact to Q times, which is probably one of the bigger ones because they they always talk about how Q times if they're affected, some of the decisions they will or will not make. Okay, cool. Autofill swap. Players helped us find a gap where autofill wasn't accurately accounting for teammates' role preferences. This led to situations where two teammates were autofilled into each other's primary or secondary roles. In 10.7, we completely eliminated that bug with no impact to queue times, just basically whatsoever. Pre-made parity. It's like clarity, but with a P. That's why I say parity, by the way. Uh, similar to autofill parity, uh, pre-made parity strives to make matches with an equal number of pre-mades on each side. We activated this feature in 10.7, and since then have gone from 54% of pre-made matches having imbalanced pre-mades to 6%. They reduced that drastically. That was definitely a problem if it was 54%. That's over, like, that's, that's ridiculous. With little to no impact on queue times depending on skill level. Again, one of the big ones that they always talk about is queue times. It looks like they found a way to meet that and match that a bit, get it down to that 6%, probably feels a bit more nice than it did. New matchmaking algorithm. Over the last few months, we've seen stimulating and or simulating my bad and testing a new matchmaking algorithm to more accurately and quickly identify new and veteran players skills. We're happy to say that we finally made the right changes to outperform our old system and make a full upgrade to normal queues and 10.10. This system is showing an improvement in most regions, measured in terms of win prediction accuracy, and has allowed us to be confident in moving forward with our next feature, Ranked Account Seeding. The new matchmaking algorithm will be finding its way to rank queues in early preseason to avoid major impact in rank MMR during the current season. Makes sense, maybe it feels a little bit bad if you want it to happen sooner than later, but they don't really want to interrupt how the ranked season's kind of already going, because maybe you're one of the people that's actually kind of vibing, or at least just doing well more than it seems like everybody else is doing, and this could really mess you up, and they kind of don't want to maybe do that, and kind of, basically, even if it's chaos right now, it seems to be like chaos that people can navigate enough, they don't want to throw more into it, and then possibly ruin everybody, unfortunately, even more, right? So I, I can understand that. You might disagree with that. I'm not saying I necessarily agree with it, but I'm saying that that's probably the reason and that's understandable. Ranked Account Seeding Formerly known as New Account Seeding, Ranked Account Seeding is built to more accurately place you in your first games of Ranked. In the past, we were using a fixed placement to start you somewhere towards the bottom half of the curve. 
While starting everyone at the same spot was fair, no it wasn't, uh, this meant players actually at the skill level of the starting MMR were frequently matched with new players whose actual skill was much higher or lower. Exactly, it was not fair. Since MMR is close to a bell curve, this meant matchmaking quality suffered right at the highest populated skill level. I could have told Riot this was going to happen. We talked about this on this channel like months and months ago, actually. I'm not going to try and take credit or anything like that. I'm not going to come at Riot sideways at this right now, but I'm saying this this kind of felt like one of those no-brainers that for some reason it took them a while to get, and I get why. They don't act on stuff immediately because they need data to support it, right? If they just jumped on things, Yasuo would be deleted, Zoe would be nerfed to the ground, and some other champions that actually aren't that problematic would probably be gone or nerfed or gutted and stuff because people would just say right do something and then they would just do something they got to get data to be able to make actions i know but this is one thing even in team fight tactics i hated the whole oh it's a new match or it's a new set of stuff so we gotta send everybody back to iron 2 it's like no no because like the fundamentals of the game are still the same some of the champions and abilities and stuff are different some of the boards work differently when you have different elements or whatever but it's still fundamentally the same game the same way league of legends is fundamentally the same game with new champions and like elemental dragons and plants are introduced don't send us all back to Iron 2 and then expect it to be fair when then people that are actually Iron 2 are not going to suffer against people like myself or others who are not Iron 2 that then climb faster and just smash people because we're not where we're supposed to be. That doesn't, you know, that just seem kind of bad. By seeding players based on gameplay information from other queues, we're confident that players will be more accurately placed at the start of their climb. Oh, thank goodness. This will make it so others aren't experiencing matches that seem imbalanced from the start. We'll be rolling this out slowly over the next couple of patches so we can monitor and respond to impacts quickly and carefully, which makes me wonder if I should maybe, on like a, a backup account or something, start up rank to see what happens. And I think I think for new accounts, it's still going to put you like an Iron 2 or something because you're new, but then I could, I could do that and we could have our own study about that versus like a, a, an account that already exists that's already ranked or not already ranked, but like has been ranked in the past and then kind of put those together side by side and see the changes there and be able to give more data for ourselves on that matter. Cause maybe you're someone in that boat, maybe like school or college or whatever, with everybody being home and stuff has kept you a bit busy. You have actually haven't really started rank yet on any of your accounts. And so maybe that could be something that uh, we can experiment with together basically is what I'm saying. What's next for matchmaking? We've made a lot of improvements in matchmaking over the first third of the year, and the team is rolling into work towards our other goals. We'll still be monitoring matchmaking and making additional tweaks as necessary, but investigation on remaining topics like autofill position and parity, both teams having the same positions autofilled, and blue side red side matchmaking calibration will be on more of a preseason timeline. Coming soon. Our next major area of focus is on providing better feedback on action taken around disruptive behaviors. We've already begun shipping improvements. Player feedback. In 10.10, .10, we started leveling up our player feedback system's notifications and actions punished will be much clearer going forward. You're now notified when a disruptive player you've reported is punished, even if the player was punished for a different report category or is in a later game. Let us know what level of feedback feels right to you as we experiment with these notifications. We'll be actively tweaking and the visible visibility configurations here to make sure we find the right balance on punishment. Let me make this very simple. For me, it's just a matter of if I report somebody and like five other people reported them and we reported them for saying a slur, right? Just notify all of us that they got punished. Don't notify the last person that got punished. Don't notify just one person because they said negative behavior instead of like racism. Just hit us all. Be able to like, hey, the person you reported that you put in the report for, they got punished. Just, it's very, very simple. Just keep it like that. You don't have to be super detailed on it. You don't have to do any of the extra there, right? Just, hey, if we all reported that thing, that person, and they got punished, just tell us all they got punished. That's what the problem is, really. It feels like if you report somebody, and they got hit with something, and you don't get that feedback though, it's like, oh, they just go unpunished, Riot doesn't care, etc. When in fact, they did care, the person got punished, but you don't know, so it just feels kind of wrong, right? So, you know, just that, that in terms of player feedback and stuff like that, that, that's probably it, just simplistic. There you go. Where are we now and what's next? Oh, we think one of the best ways to identify and implement the right solution is to iterate quickly and adapt. Throughout 2020 and into 2021, dang, that seems like so far away, but it also isn't, huh? We'll be experimenting with some new features on live servers to more rapidly adapt to behavioral trends as they come up. Compared to full-fledged features, you should expect these experiments to be less developed, but evolve rapidly if we see clear successes. The goal is to get quick feedback from players as we're rounding these features out so we don't waste time and resources on things that won't actually solve the problems you're dealing with. 
Here's the first area we're exploring that clearly isn't meeting today's standards. Champion Select Reporting and Muting Disruptive behavior in Champion Select is a problem that players have very few ways to deal with. Starting late June and early July, we're going to give you the ability to report a player in Champion Select. At first, these reports will be used to establish a data fountain, or foundation I should say, for Champion Select behavior. Once you've got a solid understanding of the situation, we'll be looking to build out a punishment system. Uh, out of everything we're talking about today, this one is the one we're going to be the most cautious with. I don't know, just bring in Monokuma from Danganronpa, call it good. What's next? Given the breadth, if, if, or just basically given the length of this space, we'll be looking into next steps around game ruining behavior throughout the year. Additional communication can be found on Meddler's most recent blog post, we'll provide more updates soon. We've also got one important teed up toward our goal of ensuring players can play with and find other players they want to play with. Opening Flex Restrictions Over the past few months, we've seen 5-stack premates of Flex Q go from less than 20% of Flex games to greater than 35%, likely due to the launch of Clash and more time at home. This makes full premates the most popular party size in all Flex Q. There's no better time for us to loosen up the gates and allow players to play with anyone on their team, not just those within nearby ranked tiers. To maintain match fairness, we're switching Flex matchmaking to more similar to Clashes, which prioritizes balance across a much broader range of MMR. We're currently locking down uh, with upcoming patches to ship these changes. And then the final section, preseason ideas and exploration. In addition to what we've talked about so far, we're also planning more improvements to rank for preseason 2021. Promotion series, and this is the part we talked about kind of accidentally in yesterday's video. Toward the goal of improving progression, satisfaction, and skill expression in our systems, it's likely that we will be removing interdivision promotions to reduce frustrations of seemingly hitting a wall when you know you've been playing well. This means also needing to look at inner tier division demotion protections to make sure that players are able to get where they should be in both directions without false limitations. Good. Uh, ranked informed matchmaking transparency. Player playing matches where display ranks are very far apart is frustrating, regardless of how close everyone's MMR is. We're looking to modify matchmaking to include rank spread limits and skill level transparency updates. The goal here is to give you confidence that you're playing with other players who are on the same stage of their climb as you. Overall, we'd like to avoid those occasional situations where you see a large gaps between players' ranks in your game. Unless it's that Vladimir that was in my game top lane that just single-handedly carried the game. We weren't even feeding, but they were just so good. They were just destroying the enemy top laner and just split push the heck out of top lane. If you want to let him stick around, I'm totally fine with that though. Uh, we'll be making uh, thematic changes to the Victoria skin line and highlighting your current and past ranked accomplishments to let, so that you can let other players know your past achievements without diluting your current ones. Organized group play. Given the successful launch of Clash and increase of playmates across queues, see the flex note above, it has come up with more cohesive vision of the team-based League of Legends takes us in the future. Okay, that was confusing. Uh, we're going to be looking at long-term solutions for how Clash and Flex play together to create a healthy team ecosystem for League of Legends, ironing out to find others in League you'd like to play with, and recognizing teams that stick together and giving them something to strive for long-term. So in conclusion, it's been a busy year so far, and the team is super excited to keep the ball rolling and deliver more improvements on your competitive experience. We'll continue to provide updates on what we're shipping and how things are going, so please keep giving us your unfiltered feedback. As always, see you on the Rift. All right, well, here's my quick unfiltered feedback. And we'll just go section by section, and I'll, I will make it quick. I think your goals are fine. The fact that you have goals, the fact that you're listening, that's great. Initial results. When it comes to autofill and stuff like that, the idea that, you know, if my jungler's autofilled, their jungler's autofilled, something like that, I think that's a pretty straightforward uh, solution. I like that idea. Because that can cost you a game, especially in a role like jungle, where junglers have, like, a lot of knowledge and stuff they need to handle. If that's the one that's autofilled on our team, but not theirs, there's gonna be a difference, especially in the early game. We're not gonna get to the late game, or team fighting or anything like that, to maybe try and correct the course of the ship at that point. It's, it's over. So I like the idea like that. When it comes to matchmaking and stuff like that, I think this stuff is pretty good too. Player feedback, just the fact that you're listening to player feedback, uh, champion select reporting and muting I think is great because there's a lot of things, you even see it with streamers and stuff where people can go in there and try and ruin the game from the jump. That's bad. And the fact that we can maybe hold people accountable, well that's good. Uh, opening flex restrictions, I think this is fine with the current world events and stuff that are going on right now. I don't really play enough flex to really give a great opinion on this, so I probably will re like not. Uh, the reason I like this idea, the promotion series, I don't think there should be promo series from like Plat 2 to Plat 1, or even Silver, like 3 to Silver 2. I think if you want to make promo series still exist from like Silver to Gold, or like Plat to Diamond, 
fine. But the inner tier stuff, that has to go. It has to be more like Teamfight Tactics. Uh, Teamfight Tactics has spoiled us now. But that also just feels better. It feels good when you land on 97 LP and you go win the next game. You didn't basically only get just 3 LP to then jump into your promo. So you get to just go into the next like tier. That's great. This stuff right here, what I think what they're trying to talk about is uh, the, the limitations on the MMR and how sometimes you can play a game. And even in Teamfight Tactics, it's an issue where once I hit gold and my climb up there, it was like, oh, why am I still playing with iron players? I, I should not be playing with iron players anymore at like mid gold. That should be done. I should be playing like silver players at the minimum. That, that, that shouldn't be that large of a range just because of MMR. So I think that's a good step forward. I wonder how it will necessarily play out. But yeah, I think that's actually good too. Organized group play, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know what the hype about Clash was. I wasn't really hyped for Clash. Maybe that's because just about everybody that I used to play League with quit playing League, so I play alone now anyways. So, you know, that, that might be part of it too, so take that part with a grain of salt. But yeah, I think this is overall good stuff. We talked about this a bit in yesterday's video, so I wanted to make a follow-up video about like the specific things that were actually changing. So that's gonna be all for this video from me. So thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification, the actual subscribe button. But I don't know which video will be next, because I can have a lot of kinks. So until next time, take care. GG, get jinxed. Thank you for watching, and enjoy pizza responsibly.